So I am Ashwini Siddhi. I am the threat modeling service owner from Dell Technologies. Uh, so I think I'm the right person to be talking about threat modeling because I've been uh, working on threat modeling ever since I joined uh, Dell. So it's been about five years now. Uh, so we've been working with all kinds of threat modeling, threat modeling of the cloud, hard, uh, hardware-related threat modeling, software-related threat modeling, uh, threat modeling for privacy, threat modeling for uh, products that are shipped, threat modeling for applications that are deployed in um, our environment in containers, microservices, or cloud, or even on-prem. How many people do we know who do threat modeling as their core Right? How many such people do we know? Uh, I'm not sure about you, but um, even within my organization where threat modeling is a big deal, we are just a handful of us. So it is uh, considered a unicorn skill to have. It is a specific niche skill, uh, especially when you know how to do threat modeling the right way. And that's why this topic becomes so much more important. And that's why it's so much more important to talk about it with all of us in the security folks, right? And make them understand what is the importance of threat modeling. So let's start off with this uh, slideshow um, and talk about what is threat modeling. Uh, so what I would like to say is that I, threat modeling is not rocket science, right? So when I say threat modeling or when I show an example of threat modeling uh, to my uh, uh, folks that I'm working with, they're like, oh my God, threat modeling is so complex. It's so what is it? And, you know, so it's not rocket science. That's what I want to say first. And it's a design specific activity, right? So what do I mean when I say design activity? So if you look at SDL, Secure Development Life Cycle, at each of your development phases, you have a specific security verification activity mapped out, right? So after you write your code, you're going to do a static code analysis. After your code is built, maybe if it's a web component, you're going to do a dynamic web uh, analysis of it. And you're obviously going to do a malware scan of it, etc. So at each point, there is a specific verification activity. So what is it for design? right that is what is threat modeling so threat modeling if you want to put it in a very basic uh, sdl terminology it would be that threat modeling is a design verification activity so what do i mean by a design verification activity it means that i am looking at my design the product or the system the applications design to understand what can go wrong in terms of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Where can my business objective go wrong in terms of security? And how do I look at this activity? It, it is a conceptual analysis, right? So threat modeling is a conceptual analysis of my design as a security verification activity. What threat modeling lets you do is that it lets you conceptually analyze it. You don't need the tools. You don't need to hack into a system. You just need to look at the design and put on a hacker's hat and think like a hacker. You don't need to work like a ha hacker to get all the tools running. You need to think like a hacker, look at the design and say, oh, yes, this is where the data resides. This is where I can get into the system. I see there's a gap in control here. So I can get into the system like this and hack into this system and get so-and-so data. So it is a conceptual analysis. It is, uh, I wouldn't say theoretical. Uh, you're applying your mind, certainly, but it is also not getting your hands 100% dirty, right? So it is quicker than a lot of other hacking activities, other verification activities. And the best part is it lets you be a hacker without actually want, uh, you know, being a hacker. That is the benefit of threat modeling. The benefit of using threat modeling is that you're going to identify your specific design issues uh, related to your business. Uh, with respect to threat modeling. So you're going to identify where can authentication and authorization issues go wrong, lateral movement, uh, escalation of privileges. These kind of things you, you'll be able to identify with threat modeling, right? The, uh, I spoke about the basic authentication example. So these kind of things, which no tool really identifies for you is what threat modeling will be able to identify for you. And that's why you need to do threat modeling even if you have tools like scanners and Nessus and um, Fortify Acunetics, what they give you is different from the results what threat modeling gives you. What does a typical threat modeling activity look like, right? Um, so like I said, when somebody sees it, it looks like, oh my God, crazy. A lot of people assume that threat modeling is all about drawing this diagram and they're done with threat modeling, right? No, that is the first step. 
people think it's a documentation activity the minute i draw the diagram i'm good and threat modeling is over no threat modeling is not a documentation activity it is supported by documentation and creating this diagram is the first step. what do you do after creating your diagram you need to identify your attack surfaces but the best threat models are done if you apply your own mind to identify these threats so this is how basic threat modeling is done architecture identify attack and protect surface identify what are the threats for this and then rate them as per severity and identify what are the fixes for them uh, that is a typical threat modeling activity but the thing that it has worked very well for uh, specific uh, traditional architectures etc but does it work well for cloud maybe not right you might need to add some other things why because cloud brings into the picture new vendors right i mean you we have aws we have azure we have gcp and many other cloud service providers we have vendors and obviously there is integrations etc um, and we have compliances and policies with cloud we have the ccm policy and we also have so many other regulatory policies coming into the picture it could be financial uh, it could be anything else or it could be even an organizational policy related to cloud etc and network and infrastructure nothing is in your control anymore you're giving it to a third party uh, if, if you don't have visibility to the network uh, to the infrastructure if you're if if you've taken up software as a service right so that that is a black box you don't know what is happening there so that is a that that can be a problem right what you don't know uh, you don't trust right so that that is the thing with security and then there's also this aspect of data and privacy you're putting all of your data in a public cloud right you're putting it in s3 buckets you're putting it in um, uh, azure objects uh, which might not even be secure and and if you follow security news from a long time you do know the city bank issue that happened with aws the s3 buckets were public they were not even locked there was no object locking so any data that their customers put out in s3 bucket was out there by default anybody could just go access it right so these are the new considerations that come into the picture with respect to cloud ST elements, um, I personally don't think it's a threat modeling tool, uh, but they market it as a threat modeling tool and they don't yet have a diagramming capability. Uh, but I just put it there because it's marketed as a threat modeling tool. And uh, these tools identify the threats and attack surfaces themselves and generate the list of threats themselves. The best part of these tools is that you don't even have to think, okay, where can an attack happen, blah, blah, all of that. All of that is automated for you, most of it at least, right? I personally believe that nobody can 100% automate threat modeling. Uh, if somebody gave me a commercial tool and told me that this is what the tool does and these are the results, I would still look at the diagram. I would still apply my mind. I would still try to see what can go wrong in terms of the design uh, before looking at the set of results, right? But it depends, right, from maturity to maturity. Uh, because I have the experience, I look at it. But maybe somebody who's starting off new, it's pretty helpful. Just go look at the results. Maybe after doing two or three um, threat models, you will feel like doing it yourself, right? You will feel like looking at the design yourself and thinking where can things go wrong. Because obviously you're not you're not a bot. You're not you're not born to do the same repetitive stuff again, right? You are you do want challenges, you do want to learn, you want to extend your scope. So you're gonna come back and automatically look at things, uh, use your um, um use your mind for them so it, it, it's an iterative process and you'll get there so that's how commercial tools are helpful and i'm hoping to get them for my organization but the only problem is they're very expensive uh, and in the current economic situation that's a bit of a problem uh, but yeah i mean it's it's expensive but i think these commercial tools are great uh, diagramming tools are great too. They let you draw diagrams, uh, but that's all. They don't do much. Uh, I'll have to draw the diagram, attach it in an email, send it to you for review or send it to somebody else to take a look at it. Uh, sometimes they don't generate the list of threads. So it's, it's not great. It's great with just drawing, but nothing beyond that is what I would say. I've called out Stride, which is from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft was the first one to come out with this diagramming tool. Uh, it, it is an industry standard. A lot of people use it. Uh, if you're starting off threat modeling, I think it's an amazing tool to start, especially because it's so easy to draw, right? I mean, I still use Microsoft Stride just to draw the diagrams. 
it lets me pick uh, stencils and drag and drop and the diagram is ready. So in that sense, I really like Microsoft Threat Modeling tool for diagramming, but not the list of threats. So great. So thank you for listening to me. Yeah, nice. Thank you. See you all.